Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to Tea Time with Mioni. This is the series where I get to sit down with my beverage of choice, usually tea. Today, it's actually coffee. I know I'm a race traitor and talk to you about all kinds of things, whether that's to do with the channel, with myself or indeed Final Fantasy 14 news and feedback from you guys, my viewing community. So this time around, I wanted to start off by thanking you all really from the bottom of what I might call a heart in this body of mine. Thank you so very much. We are actually getting close to 60,000 subscribers, which is a goal that I didn't think we were going to reach this year. So thank you kindly to everybody who's actually hit that button. I know that some people don't like subscribing to this channel because it puts out certain content they don't want to see. And sometimes I do have a habit of actually spamming videos some people don't like that they don't like extra content but it is what it is i do what i want to do and for the most part now we have another channel the second channel is live meoni games um i'll link that in the description for people we're pretty much playing all of the other games that we would originally play here over there so we're not cluttering this main channel so for the most part you should see final fantasy related stuff or rpg related stuff on this channel and the other channel is for any old guff that I fancy playing, which is really letting me blow off some steam. Recently, we played a bit of the Maneater game, which came out. I've absolutely adored that game, and I continue to make more videos for that occasionally. But on this channel, we're sticking to Final Fantasy XIV for the most part, because it's the game we love, and the most I have an audience for, of course. It would be kind of pointless to continue making stuff here that's not going to get the same viewership and the Final Fantasy 7 stuff you know the remake stuff did teach me an important lesson about what not to do with your audience so here we are anyway welcome to my tea time today I really wanted to talk about the recent news that we covered on Saturday this is stuff that came from the uh, unofficial subreddit discord community for Final Fantasy 14 with the translation team over there that worked very hard to translate translate all of the information that was put on the live letter rerun series so if you're unfamiliar um basically square enix have been rebroadcasting a lot of the older live letter series so the letter from the producer lives the only interesting thing about that is that we actually have sometimes some narration and points from yoshi p from foxclon and other members of the development team actually commenting on things that were in those live letters from yesterday and kind of getting, giving us some more credence on why those decisions were made. It was really fun. I would definitely recommend checking out that video. It's basically me reading those points. There's trivia in there. There's also, you know, bits and pieces about the future. So it's a really, really decent read, and I thought I'd share it with you. Now, I got 40,000 views for that video, which, I mean, I'd feel guilty about. But I did completely credit the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit Discord community. It, it is completely their work. I'm just reporting on it and giving my own opinions like a proper journalist should. You know, at, at no point did I take credit for any of that information. That's the key point to take from that. But what was interesting about that is some of the reactions that you guys left in the comments section to some of the points we brought up. And I think the, the main reason that a lot of those comments were so lengthy and really really constructive is because people's reactions to the housing crisis um, that impacted basically the entire community and indeed yoshi p directly kind of blew me away so let's let's read through some of this stuff so just to give some credit before we read a couple of comments um the 2.0 housing series when 2.0 came out when they eventually put housing into the game the prices were deliberately set high so if you wanted a house it could cost you hundreds of millions of gil for certain plots and this was done apparently in a design perspective from uh, designed around the likelihood of a legacy player coming back from 1.0 having that sheer ridiculous amount of gill. Now, some of those did. It was easier in some part to make gill in 1.0, as, as far as I'm concerned. Some people have told me that. And, I, you know, I obviously I can't fact check that because I didn't get high enough level in 1.0 myself. I was just a fisherman. So, yeah, apparently that was why it was designed to be so high. Obviously, that resulted in 
a lot of people getting quite angry that it was gated behind such a ridiculous number. Um, but it was designed to act as both a gill sink for those rich players and address what was going to become a rather massive hurdle with the housing system they decided to go with, where obviously housing limitations was going to be commonplace, especially back in the 2.0 series where you can imagine there was just like a couple of wards or something. That's going to be... That, that's... I can't even... Yeah. I, I remember roughly, but it kind of painted a big cross on 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 housing for me i just didn't bother with it when i heard about all of the drama at the time when 2.0 came out because i was a, obviously a, a, a late player in 1.0 and then i started in the beta for for 2.0 and then we played when the game came out as you can see some of my early videos are weird and i sound really awful in them but back then i kind of didn't really care housing wasn't my bag a lot of stuff wasn't my bag because I wasn't primarily creating a YouTube channel around it, which is my own fault. But if I was more interested in the area, I'm sure I would be outraged too, to some degree. But obviously there are some problems with certain people, and it came apparent during this live letter rerun that Yoshi P made it evident that the housing system in its current state back then in 2.0 uh, with those prices actually caused a lot of people to send death threats to him directly and other members of the development team and that they were asking directly for Yoshi P's resignation because of the housing crisis. So he revealed this in the live letter rerun. He didn't have to talk about this. Was his, he, this was his voluntary information. And apparently he did actually consider, this is something that he admitted, right, he considered resigning over over this situation basically due to how powerful the player base reacted and obviously how negatively he felt about this he's a guy at the end of the day that loves to deliver games that make people smile he's a developer but at the same time he's a player of the game as we have all learned over the years that we've been with yoshi peers as, as the head of 14. And it just blows my mind to see how negatively some people react. Um, a lot of people online will just be like, oh, this is a completely shit game. This person doesn't know what they're doing. Get this person resigned. But you forget how deeply that actually affects the person. I've said this before about comment sections on videos, how you know the smallest negative comment can be all you focus on in the entirety of your week. It's the same, but on a much bigger scale, right? When there are literally potentially thousands of people asking for your resignation and all you've done is essentially save the game for them you know with a, with a development team as well it's not just you yourself yoshi p but when you when you do that sort of stuff and this is how you you are treated yeah i i would consider resignation as well it's no surprise to me but it is surprising to read when he actually said this stuff on the live letter rerun that he was admitting this information we've not got that previously to this and it's quite it's quite hard hitting when you think about it so a few of you commented a few of these comments got massive amounts of upvotes so let's see first we've got uh davida z who got the highest rated commented on that video they say on that housing bit i think people should take that uh, should take that and strongly consider how they interact with game developers in the future. Yes, we get it, you're invested in the game, and you can be a little emotional about it. But being so mad and so toxic that you make the producer consider resigning? Come on people, we have to do better than that. And I see it all the time too. Just recently, people getting crazy about the new relic weapons being too easy, and or losing its prestige. I'm not saying that you have to take everything they make at face value and not criticize it, but it's not all about, uh, but it's all about your approach. Sorry, I'm, I'm completely potato at reading at this point. I need more coffee. Let's, let's fix that in a second. Work on your approach, he puts in capitals. No one wants to get berated, especially over something they've passionately and painstakingly created over the years. The developers are just as in there are just as invested as us. Sorry, I'm butchering words today, but the point is everybody pretty much agrees with that. If you don't agree with that, I don't know what to tell you. These people do put in way more hours than the majority of people in in, in the West. Let's be fair. Let's be completely honest. 
an Eastern developer, a Japanese developer in particular, or a Chinese developer, regardless what nationality, in the East, it's commonplace to work overtime if you've not finished something or do work unpaid. We saw this before with the Glamour system, where essentially um, hats weren't going to be available on Viera, full stop. But a lot of the development team went behind Yoshi's back and did the stuff out of you know, office hours to actually make it so that they could wear something on their head. It's that sort of dedication that's both scary from a Western perspective, because obviously, you know, if you're at work when you're not supposed to be or you're overworking yourself, that's putting yourself at uh, various different degrees of danger from, you know, mental issues, physical health issues, um, you know, in certain in, in West, certain parts of that activity would be classed as illegal or at least, you know, not advised. So that sort of stuff is commonplace over there. Um, there's a lot of honor in what you create. And when you dishonor yourself publicly, if you look at any Japanese history, it's not uncommon for them to literally fall on their own sword. And I'm using that both figuratively and literally in history. Um, but it's still commonplace today. There's a lot of honor. You can dishonor your entire family by making one decision incorrectly that then breaks your entire generation of family and then they disown you as well. And that's where, you know, divorces and the expectation for taking your own life and, and really awkward and really dark situations arise so i completely agree with uh, dodiva z right the likelihood is that every time you comment something on the official forums or even on reddit because i know for a fact that yoshi p and the team do visit reddit occasionally it's a, it's a really good source of information i mean maybe not directly they have people who go and get this information for them other employees and then it's passed on to yoshi p be this bugs exploits uh feedback about certain uh, pieces of content they do their market research and i can imagine that some of the stuff really paints the content in a different light um, they're, they're there to create stuff for us to do. Yes, they make mistakes. This is what game development is about, especially when it is as experimentative as Final Fantasy XIV. Not a single MMO that I've played in the many years that I have played MMOs has really covered the same ground that XIV has. The innovation has been paramount, I think. Uh, ocean fishing, for example, just one of many hundred different examples that you could bring up is completely useless in terms of main content delivery it adds nothing but side content and it could die very quickly in fact there are still some people still doing ocean fishing but a lot less than when it came out this this content in many people's eyes did die um relatively quickly after people had got what they wanted the three ether pools or whatever they got their shark mount they got their minion and they don't do it anymore myself i wanted to go for the ocean fisher title but since then i have stopped doing it because it was a, a bit of a grind that i didn't really feel like i'd got the mount i'd got the minion i wasn't that bothered but that is a gamble isn't it there's a lot of extra development time and indeed money it's part of the budget pushed into little things like that and that's what we get we we have already heard that they reduce the number of dungeons that we get per patch cycle um, by one instead of having like a hard mode of an old dungeon that doesn't really need to exist it's it's kind of pointless the gear is average it's nice to have those dungeons but at the same time they are you know not as important as having something else and ocean fishing did get more people actually involved in it than that other dungeon ever would, I think. A lot of people were more favourable towards ocean fishing than they were to the hard mode, you know, average dungeons that, you know, we could basically take or leave at the end of the day. Even though from a lore perspective they're very exciting and fun and it gives us something to do, they're not as exciting as something... <clears throat> sorry, my voice is cracking. Not as exciting as something unique and brand new to the game, like something like ocean fishing. So to be so negative with something is, I mean, we've talked about this in previous videos, including Tea Times, where I've said, try to be constructive with your points. Just saying, oh, this is shit. I hate this person. It doesn't make sense, right? You wouldn't go to, uh, as I, I would imagine you wouldn't go to it. You're not going to go to a restaurant that you've paid, I don't know, $1,000 to sit at the table 
let alone order anything, you know, get, I don't know, one of your, say for instance, it's your favorite restaurant. Someone delivers you your favorite piece of food and you just say, that's complete shit after you've eaten it all. You know, you've eaten the meal at this point and then you go, absolute shit, I'm not paying for that and you walk out. How is that going to make the person feel as opposed to saying, actually, this meal, you know, it wasn't the best. It was overcooked. There were certain problems with it. If you don't give any kind of constructive feedback as to why you dislike something or like something, then that's not going to be taken forward. You basically might as well be just shouting into the void. You might as well have your head down your toilet and shout down there because as, for as much as it matters on the forums and stuff, that's pretty much how, how it should be. But unfortunately, we have the Eastern developers and PR teams, and obviously in the West we have the same, but for the most part, it's taken a lot harsher, right? If Yoshi P sat there and he's like really excited, oh yeah, we're going to deliver, um, you know, the next Nia raid, and then people complain that the... What did they complain about? Pretty much everything, right? Um, I'm trying to think of another example. The butt slider lack of, um, which was a bit of a joke, but at the same time... This stuff where it's like, oh, how dare you fix this bug with the butt? So they had to revert it and make the butt bigger again. This is another topic entirely to do with censorship. But at the same time, how negatively some people react, though that knee-jerk reaction is ridiculous. It really is. So yeah, I think people do need to work on their approach. And um, as much as our little comments and and conversation on it now won't change anything. I think a, a lot of people who did watch that video and, and never heard that information before from the translation of a re, uh, live letter reruns probably took on board how much they actually do listen. They might not talk about it publicly because it's not in their interest to do so. It's going to be negative press, isn't it? Yo, Yoshi P is uh, upset about this. They're not going to report on that stuff. So for him to openly admit that did kind of open the door a little bit as to how they actually feel depending on the feedback they get. And if it's just all horrible death threat stuff, first of all, you shouldn't be sending death threats to somebody making a game or anybody on a development team or any part of a team at all should not be receiving threats of a death nature from you, the consumer, just because you disagree with something in a game. It's absolutely atrocious. It is toxic. It is frankly disgusting. And honestly, you deserve, you know, the worst possible outcome out of this possible yourself. It's almost as bad as, I don't know, it, it's just, it is bullying at the end of the day. And I don't think people realize how heavily their words are taken for, as we've said for the last like 10 minutes but it is frankly disgusting it is horrible to see and i really hope that some people realize hey you know these these are real people at the end of those keyboards you know and, and those monitors in japan reading this stuff or in america or wherever you know no company no no company should have to you know protect their employee uh, employees against you the consumer it doesn't make sense to me we should be going hey this content wasn't great or we could say yeah eureka was crap because blah 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 right as long as you say why you think it was crap then that's something they can work on you know from my perspective the idea of the bosgian southern front for example i've talked with uh, two of my friends about this as you've seen in other live letters and more recently we've talked about it in other videos but the idea that they've made it so that you have a choice between doing the Eureka style content or a quest line external from Eureka that we still don't know what that involves, probably like traditional relic grinds, you know, dungeons and stuff like that, and light grinds or whatever it might be. The fact that they've considered that and input that into the game does mean that they are actively listening to people's feedback. It does, however, mean that they've bent to the will of the consumer once again. But at the same time, how far do you have to bend before it makes everyone happy. Making everyone happy is the worst possible thing you can do as a developer. Look at World of Warcraft. Look at how much they try to bend to a certain audience or a certain particular portion of their audience and how negatively it impacted the game. How negatively it, it resulted in basically financial decisions that weren't directly as their part, but you know, it, it basically screwed World of Warcraft completely up. I used to love that game when I was younger. 
it's it's not the same thing but that's just a prime example of what can happen if you listen to everybody and try to keep everyone happy you need to focus on something that you want to deliver with your own ident and your own content um delivery sort of deadline and work on it that way looking at feedback is great but when you consume it too much then it affects what you create to the point of it not being the same product and that's the real danger when it comes to game development or development of any type of content be it youtube content creation writing a book writing a play writing a musical or creating a game it is all the same so you have to take criticism with a pinch of salt but when the criticism is i hate you i hope you die end quote then obviously that person individual does should not be taken as a representative of the larger whole you have to remember as well that the majority of people that flocked to the forums and did this whole petition and crap for basically getting uh, yoshi p fired that was the whole goal of it get him get him to resign you know a lot of people that did that there was a fair amount of them didn't represent the whole community because the whole community doesn't go to the damn forums and doesn't express their opinions which is why i say to you guys all the time if somebody is saying something if it's a controversial matter on the final fantasy 14 official forums it's kind of like our duty to go onto that forum and counter that with other feedback you know if we don't say why we liked something occasionally then all they're going to do is listen to the negative. You have to outweigh the negative, the pure negative, with constructive criticism, regardless of if it is of a positive result or a negative result. You cannot just shout and scream your way through the game. That's my opinion. A lot of people might disagree with me, but to those people, they're probably very immature and they can't see this for what it actually is, which is just direct idiocy. It really is. There's no other way of describing it. But anyway, we've got another comment from uh, uh, Keyblades R Us. Uh, WTF, Yoshi P literally saved this game, they say. And some people almost drove him to resign over freaking housing prices. What is wrong with them? So yeah, thank you for that comment as well. We're not going to read through all of those sorts of comments because they pretty much reflect the same sort of response. Like, what are they actual? You know, everybody with the right mind is saying, why? You know, why would people do this? But you have to remember, if they're going to freak out over housing prices to this degree, can you imagine what they've done for stuff like Eureka or certain other decisions with, I don't know, in-game events and things, or other decisions to do with relic weapons, for example? As uh, Dodiva Z or Z said in, in the uh, first comment we read, you know, people are throwing knee-jerk reactions to, this relic's too easy right it's the first stage of relic do you remember the last relic because i do we went in an emos and we got the first stage of a relic pretty much within the first i don't know 20 minutes something like that because it was it was kind of given to you all of the relic first stages i mean go and do the a realm reborn one you know you've got a little bit of a quest line but at the same time you're getting the first stage of a relic that's pretty crap you know within the hour or so it's not great it's not that you know to the point where stats are, are usable on it but it's the first stage of a relic this time it's the first stage of a relic and actually has stats that are usable because they've learned over the years that people want to actually use these things as soon as possible so they gave it you basically this isn't a story of things to come this isn't a casualization of the content this is hey look you spend poetics Here's your thing. And people saying it's without prestige as well. This is something else I wanted to address. Don't you think the intro quest line was amazing with, you know, with Sid, for example? And that whole scene I won't spoil for people who haven't done it. Don't you think that the each of the weapons has that kind of mysticism behind them? I personally do. Perhaps we played different parts of the game. Perhaps we, we played different content. But from what I played, I was incredibly and solely invested in seeing what happens next in both the storyline of Bozjar and, and the Resistance, and also, you know, the weapon series itself. I want to see what happens. Does my white mage cane go from a branch to a bush? And then there's people complaining about the design. The designs of the first age relics are never pretty. Do people not get this? You're not going to get something that looks epic until either halfway through or near the end, okay? And if the glow's good, then the final stage. But usually the glow is, is like a 50-50 chance 
Um, some of the Eureka weapons look great with a glow, some of them look atrocious, right? It's At that point, it's an aesthetic decision that you have between those two options because there's always a replica vendor in the future where you can use it as glamour anyway, and you could use it, yeah, you can use re re relics as, as glamour anyway. It's always been a thing. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think people need to be more constructive with their stuff, their feedback, why I don't like stuff and why I do like stuff, but that's where we'll end that little bit of rant but i wanted to make that apparent i wanted to share my opinions on it i have the tendency of making videos and not having opinions on things all the time i i made a little bit of an opinion obvious yes uh, in in that previous video not yesterday on saturday but it was really sort of nagging at me and i thought it was important to get some of the general consensus a lot of you i think 180 something people liked uh dodiva z's comment which is a good sort of amount of people and i think that's the majority of where we're coming from for that feeling it's okay to criticize at the end of the day don't don't take this wrong but at the same time don't be a dick about it i think that's what we need to take from that ah <sighs> so let's move on what have i been doing in final fantasy 14 other than the uh, moogle tome farm which took me no time at all hopefully you're all enjoying that um i did the uh, what was it, five tomes in just over five minutes run of Aurum Veil with uh, two blue mages. That went absolutely stellar as well in terms of views. Couldn't be happier for that. I'm glad that people are watching that because it will help people. I've seen groups form around that uh, idea as well because it's so secure having the healer and the tank. Um, you know, if you had four blue mages and you have all the spells, then it's obviously faster with four blue mages as you've seen with the world first records and stuff from a Korean uh, Korean players and all that sort of stuff. But the fact that you can do it with a tank and a healer and then, you know, two blue mages with some decent spells like Missile, um, you know, and Launcher and stuff like that and um, Abyssal Transfiction, those sorts of abilities. Then, you know, five minutes, five tomes, you couldn't get any better than that. Some people prefer to not grind for stuff like that or do it as fast. Um, I mean, they, they'd rather do MSQ roulette, and apparently a lot of people didn't understand that you can do the roulettes. If a roulette includes a, a dungeon that you get through the roulette, say for instance you do MSQ and you get Praetorium, you will get 10 tomes uh, from the Moogle event for its completion, even though you didn't queue directly for it. It's the same with the Alliance raids. If you queue for Alliance raids and you get Circus Tower and you get, you, you would get no tomes right but if you queue for the, the alliance raid roulette and you get for example orbon monastery then you're going to get the tomes that you would normally get from queuing directly so along with the other benefits obviously uh, you can also do this lower than maximum level as well through the roulette so obviously if you're 50 or higher for msq roulette you're still going to get the 10 tomes from Praetorium, even if you're leveling a class. I've seen a lot of people only do it on their main. The only reason you would do it on a main, like a level 80, fully leveled class, uh, would be to get the other benefits, such as the other tomes, um, you know, uh, Phantasmagoria and um, Allegory, right? That's the only reason you would do this stuff at max level. So there's a lot of incentive to help other people out. There's a lot of incentive to do the dungeons, uh, and obviously the Alliance raids are, uh, raids are applicable to the Ivalice series because that's needed to unlock the Resistance Weapon series, which is why that's on here this time. Um, it's not too bad. It's quite fun. The Echo is available in pretty much all of this stuff. Uh, it's a lot easier than it ever used to be. A lot of people look at Orbon Monastery and go, oh my goodness, this group sucks. I can't wait to see how badly we fail on Thunder God. And I've heard that so many times, but Nine times out of ten, it's not as bad as as you might imagine. Um, I've had some really, really pleasant runs. I've had some derpy runs as well, but we've got through it eventually. It's just sort of time management, how you want to address this. And of course, if you wanted to do this as fast as possible method and get your doggo necklace, you know, the Mamashiba neckerchief, uh, as fast as possible, you're not going to be doing alliance raids, are you? You're going to be doing something like Aurum Vale or Stone Vigil or... You know, any of those dungeons that you can just spam back to back to back and you can find something that works for you either with or without blue mages, with a group of friends, and you can just grind through it as fast as possible. That's how I did it. It's not favorable for everyone, but at the same time, you can't complain about an alliance raid that you've queued into um, by queuing into it. It is your decision. There are plenty of options that you can choose from. Some are better than others in terms of time management, but it's it's you at the end of the day. You made that decision, not the game. 
So yeah, we've got a few more little bits and pieces to talk about just before we uh, finish off the video. Um, but firstly, I want to talk about the fact that there's MOG Station maintenance tomorrow, the 26th of May at the time of recording. It's the 25th. Um, and my predictions for this are the Peacock Mount and Peacock Glamour. This is something I've been excited for. You might have seen a video um, last year I did when I was all the hype for this, when it was in the concept and delivery phase in Korean servers. Or is it, was it Chinese or Korean? Korean servers. I can't remember which. Uh, I think it was Korean Final Fantasy XIV that got this. Is this beautiful peacock themed outfits, uh, which is unisex, if I remember. So males and females get the same outfit, which is lovely. It's dyeable as well, if I remember, which is all the rage. If you can imagine all the sort of peacocky colors there, the sort of petroleum colors flowing down there are oh, so good. And then the peacock mount itself is absolutely stellar. I I really want that so badly. So in terms of things that could be in tomorrow's MOG maintenance, I'm not sure what else it could be. Um, unless they surprise us with something like the regalia. A lot of people have been wanting the regalia to be put into the MOG station because they've missed the Final Fantasy XV event. Um, technically, that happened a year ago, so it is possible because usually a year sort of passes before they consider putting stuff in the MOG station. Uh, we've got the Ruby uh, Rubylite carby stuff haven't we the outfit from that and thing we got yeah so we're up to we're up to where we should be there's a few other eastern outfits that were never released here if i remember correctly that have been in the pipeline it could be one of those but personally my money and hopes and dreams are on that peacock mountain peacock outfit if it is out obviously i'll do videos on that content if it's something else then i'll probably do videos on that as well because as you know i try to cover stuff as fast as possible in as much detail as possible and if it takes multiple videos it takes multiple videos i'm sure people will love me spamming their inbox on YouTube. I always get comments like that, but all I have to say to that is you don't have to subscribe. It shows your interest to the channel and you're you're wanting to see more of it. But if you're going to ring the bell, for example, you know, expect to see videos quite regularly. It's going to annoy you probably, but some people love it, right, at the end of the day. But I'm looking forward to that personally. So pretty much we're reaching the end of the video. I just want to sort of Thank everybody for what we've got so far. Um, as I said at the start of the video, 60,000 subscribers. We're just on the cusp of that. I can talk about it now. Because by the time this video finishes its, its view cycle for the week, I probably will be at 60k. We're going to be doing a giveaway. It's a rather large giveaway for 60k. Um, I'm not going to give you too much information yet, but when we do hit 60k, I will make that video and I'll, I will announce it. It will probably be um, running for like a month or so. It's it's quite a large selection of items, physical items in real life. Let's give you that clue. And I'm really excited to give back to you guys. We've had a few people donate stuff towards that as well, um, digital items included. So it's going to be one hell of a bonanza, but it's, it's our way as a community and myself, my way as well, of giving back to you guys as much as possible uh, for all of the love and support you've given me through the, the years that we've been together. And hopefully we can go for, you know, another 60,000 subscribers more. Who knows? It's scary to me. Um, I would love to one day reach the 100k goal just so I have that beautiful plaque so I can shove it in the face of people who said I would never make it on YouTube. That would be lovely. But at the same time, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I will try to change my ways to make it happen. Hopefully the stuff I'm putting out is interesting. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of stuff to actually report on or, you know, record. There's a lot of creative stuff I'm doing here and there. You can expect a lot more lore readings this week amongst other sort of bits and pieces, probably some machinimation um, maybe some unnecessary censorship because that was far too much fun for me to make. But yeah, as a whole, I'm quite happy with where the channel's at. I've got the second channel, like I say, which is Mioni Games. You can Google that or click the link in the description. It's not for everyone. It's a lot of rambling. It's a lot of random gameplay of stuff. Um, there's not really much structure to that content. I just sort of put stuff out as I record it live. So if you're into that kind of crap, then, you know, maybe that channel is for you. We're currently up to like 90 subscribers or something, which is ridiculous especially con considering what that channel is. 
But we're going to do some, um, we are going to do some playthroughs of things in the future, and I will very likely put Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two on there in the future, as to not destroy the subscribers I have on this channel, because I know a lot of people quite rightfully had opinions on me doing it on this channel, and it was a bit spammy maybe, but it is what it is. We made our decisions. We have a second channel for that stuff now, so if you like it, it's optional. You can go and enjoy that. That's included in there. And obviously, all of this stuff is supported by you, the Patreons. None of this would be possible, right? And YouTube members, if you're pressing the join button, if you're donating to me, there's a donation. I'll put a donation link in the uh, description as well, if you'd rather just send me some money through PayPal or something. Or, you know, for Patreon people. They, those people who give money every month... It's not like a required thing. I'm not begging for money, but it really does make my life possible. At the end of the day, I have bills to pay. I have things to save for. And I've pretty much invested every single bit that isn't rent into the channel back into it. it it's not like I've gone on holidays. As you can see, Fashion Report Friday comes out every Friday. I've not had a holiday in several years. It's fine. I'm happy with that as long as you guys are happy with that. But at the same time, people supporting me on Patreon, I don't think they realize how much they're actually supporting me. So thank you to everybody who's ever given me a single dollar or dime or whatever it is. Or I think somebody gave me 10p in a donation. I think that was Kana. Thank you, Kana. That was, uh, well, okay, some, some stuff helps more than others. But 10p, right? 10p can help towards saving for a new PC for sure. Um, which is where the majority of my savings are going for. This one is actually clapping out. It's a Windows 10 machine. It's, you know, it's amazing. But it's it's dying on me. I, I need something that I can rely on, that doesn't crash, that doesn't blue screen. And that's my next purchase. So I've been saving up for about two years now. And I think I'm going to uh, crack into a thread ripper so I can actually render faster Anything to help me render faster, or cleaner, and uh, and get those videos up is is the key here. The faster I can deliver stuff to you, the happier I am. At the same time, internet situation is terrible. There's not really many options. I'm still going out in my car since they've re um, they've actually relaxed some of the restrictions, so I can get in my car and go and upload videos now. Uh, I don't get out of the car. I just dri drive to town and you know my laptop's on my lap and. We upload a video and come back on 4G internet connection, which is not ideal, but it, it is what it is, and it works, right? I can get videos out to you quicker than I normally would, right? And as a result of that, we can put more stuff out in a week. So whilst the content delivery in the past, past couple of weeks has been lower, I'd like to think that the quality of the videos has increased. Um, I'm definitely putting more effort into each individual thing that I do, and hopefully it shows. If it doesn't, then I've not worked hard enough if you've not noticed, then that's even better, because ultimately, the less you notice about change and the more you watch it, um, the better it is for everyone. So anyway, enough of my rambling. You've got a week uh, a week to enjoy. A lot of people have got uh, days off because of bank holidays and stuff, you lucky devils. Enjoy your day. It's going to be very sunny in the United Kingdom. I'm not sure if it's going to be sunny where you are in the world. A lot of you Americans are having some interesting weather, let's say, especially in the northern parts. Um, it's that kind of season again, isn't it? But stay safe wherever you are. Um, don't risk your lives needlessly. A lot of the situations are not underhand, uh, under control rather. And uh, I would, I would definitely advise using a bit of your own free will and common sense when you make decisions on where you travel and what you do, because this pandemic thing hasn't gone away anytime soon, and there's no cure yet. So you might want to be a little bit more careful. I know they're forcing a lot of people to go back to work, but again, we don't want a second spike and we certainly don't want to lose any more people. It's an absolute travesty. You don't need me to talk about that for too long because it gets very depressing. So let's stay really positive. Let's enjoy the week together. Let's look forward to peacock mounts and other things that come from Final Fantasy XIV and hopefully my passion for this stuff and, and talking to you guys in my own Discord as well, which is something else you can join. There's a link in the description again, somewhere in there. It's getting quite a lot of links. I'll have to tidy it a bit. Um, you know, hopefully we can bring that positivity forward and look forward towards a better future together and uh, enjoy the game that we all love so dearly. Thank you all kindly for watching and I'll see you all.
next time.